back to the second week of Mad Props. Does anyone remember what a prop is? That's right. A prop is an object that you use to help you tell a story. There's just one, one, one small problem. During Mad Props, the props have gone totally and completely mad. Whoa. They're all mixed up and hidden in our boxes. But we're gonna find out what kind of crazy pop props are in there in just a little bit. But first, I wanna ask you all a question. What is one of the scariest things that you've ever done? Ben? Oh, uh, well, Michelle, as you know, I am afraid of spiders. Mm -hmm. And one time, a spider crawled up my arm <gasps> while I was on a plane. Ooh. But I remained calm and I didn't panic and I lightly brushed off my arm. Whoa. That's pretty, pretty scary. You, you didn't push it off onto someone else, did you? I don't quite remember. Okay. Well, it still sounds really crazy. Crazy and scary. But did you find the courage during it, right? I did. In today's part of the big Bible story, God asks Moses to do something really scary. I mean, really scary. I'm talking shaking in your boots kind of scary. I'm talking jump into your bed, pull the covers over your head kind of scary. And in today's story, we're gonna see how God asked Moses to stand up to the biggest, baddest bully in the whole world. Let's get the story started by playing Mad Props. Oh. Doo -doo -doo. Okay guys, it's time to reveal our first Mad Prop. I have it right here. And okay. Michelle, what do you think it is? I don't know. I if you I'm... guessed <gasps> Slinky. It's a Slinky. I like it. You want to be the prop I person? will do that. Okay, so let's start our story. After fleeing from Pharaoh into the desert, Moses was caring for some sheep near Mount Sinai. Mm. He approached the mountain. Moses saw a bush on fire. But strangely, the bush wasn't burning up. Mm. Moses couldn't believe what he was seeing. He walked closer to get a better look. As Moses approached, God called to him from the middle of the burning bush. Moses replied, here I am. God warned Moses not to come any closer. He told Moses to take off his sandals because he was standing on holy ground. Then God said, I have seen what Pharaoh has done to my people and I have heard their cries for help. I want you to talk to Pharaoh and demand that let he should let my people go. Okay, mad prop number two is coming out. Do you want to see what it is? Ooh, it's a feather boa. All right, this is gonna be fun. Oh, this is... Let's get started. Whew. Who am I to lead the Israelites out of Egypt is what Moses said to God. Besides, what if Pharaoh won't listen to me? Now God replied back to Moses and he said, I will be with you. And if Pharaoh won't listen, then I will show him my signs of power. Now God told Moses to take his shepherd's staff, throw it on the ground. And, and as soon as the shepherd's staff hit the ground, it started to slither and hiss. And Moses jumped back in disbelief. God had turned the staff into a snake. Now when Pharaoh sees my power, God said, he will let my people go. Still, Moses struggled to find the courage he needed. So he pled with God to send someone else. God, God started to become upset with Moses and he said, all right then, talk to your brother Aaron. He can do the talking instead. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's take these boas away because it's time for prop number three to be revealed. All right, Michelle, you want to do <laughs> the honors? I do. <gasps> It's a soft baby blanket. I think babies actually just call them regular blankets. No, oh, I think it's a baby blanket. <laughs> all right, let's see how our story goes. So Moses and his brother Aaron <laughs> gathered all their belongings and traveled back to Egypt. God was with them the whole time. When they arrived, Aaron and Moses confronted Pharaoh. They told him, the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go. Pharaoh said, I don't believe in this God of yours, so why should I listen to him? And instead of letting the Israelites go, Pharaoh made life a lot worse for them. Hmm. The next day, Pharaoh sent a message to the Egyptian slave drivers. Do not supply any more straw for making bricks. Make the people get it themselves. Now the Israelites had to do twice as much work. 
and the slave drivers beat them because they couldn't make it the bricks fast enough. Hmm. I think it's time for our final prop. Prop number four. Ben, do us the honor. <laughs> oh, it's a rubber chicken again. You know, I secretly love the rubber chicken the most. Okay, the rest of the party. Rest of the story. So Aaron and Moses went back to Pharaoh for a second time to demand that he let their people go. And Pharaoh said, if it really is your God who says this, then show me a miracle. Just as God had instructed, Aaron threw his staff to the ground. And just like before, the staff became a stick to slither and hiss and it turned into a snake right before their eyes. Pharaoh seemed kind of unimpressed though. He called to his own magicians who threw down their staffs. And just like that, with Aaron's staff, the magician's staffs began to slither and hiss too. Their staffs turned into snakes as well. But God was with Aaron and Moses and he would not be outdone. Aaron's staff slithered over to the other two staffs and with a quick strike, it attacked and swallowed up the magician's staffs. <laughs> But even after that, Pharaoh still refused to let the Israelites go. During our story, did you notice how Moses struggled to find courage to do yeah. what God told him? Why do you think that is? The truth is, we don't really know. It, it seems like Moses just didn't have the courage to do what God asked. Mm -hmm. So he asked his brother, Aaron, to do it instead. So what about you? Do you have the courage to do what God asked? I know he's not asking you to confront Pharaoh, but he still asks us to do some pretty tough things. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some things that come to your mind, Michelle? Well, maybe it's like confronting a bully who, who'd be mean to people on the playground or school. Or maybe saying no to things that you know you shouldn't do, but your friends really want you to do. Some things are really hard. But the, here's the great thing. We don't have to do it alone. When Moses was afraid to confront Pharaoh, God told him, I will be with you. And it's the same for us. God is with us all the time, wherever we go. In fact, that's exactly what the Bible tells us in the book of Joshua, chapter one, verse nine. Here is what I am commanding you to do. Be strong and brave. Do not be terrified. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Sometimes God gives us some pretty hard things to do, mm -hmm. but he's right there with us the whole time. If we lean on God, he can help us get around our fears. He can help us get around the feeling that we're not good enough. And sometimes God will even completely remove a problem out of our way. Mm -hmm. Whenever God asks us to do something, we can have the courage because he is always right there to help us along the way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's something Moses forgot. But we don't have to make the same mistake. If God is asking you to do something that's kind of tough, Stop and talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. He can give you the courage. Michelle, do you want to pray about that? I will. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much that you are always with us. And I just pray that our grandkids and that us, Ben and I, would listen to you and, and, and come to you when we are afraid or scared or, or don't have the confidence to say no. Father, you are all powerful and you will answer our prayers. So we just pray that you would take away the fear in us, take away the fear in our grandkids, help them to turn to you. For I pray this in your name, amen. Amen. Don't forget to do week two activities if you are watching this online and we will see you next week. Hey, say goodbye chicken. <laughs>